Hi everyone, welcome to Notescraft. Today we dive into the fascinating world of sociology, exploring the influential works of Pierre Bourdieu, specifically, his concept of distinction. Let's set the stage with a bit about Bourdieu himself. Born in France in the early 20th century, Bourdieu was a renowned sociologist, anthropologist, and philosopher, whose works have left a significant imprint on contemporary sociology. His research spanned a wide range of topics from education to culture, and he was particularly interested in power dynamics within society. Bourdieu's work is vast and complex, but one of his most compelling contributions is the theory of distinction. He introduced this concept in a book aptly named Distinction, published in 1979, which has since become a cornerstone of sociological thought. But what exactly is distinction? In essence, distinction is Bourdieu's way of explaining how social status is not just about wealth or power, but also about taste and lifestyle. He argued that our preferences, from the music we listen to, the food we eat, to the art we appreciate, are not merely personal choices. Instead they are shaped by our social position and serve to reinforce that position. These tastes, as Bourdieu would call them, act as markers of distinction, separating different classes within society. Bourdieu's distinction is a lens through which we can understand the subtleties and complexities of social stratification. It pushes us to consider how our individual preferences and habits are intertwined with larger social structures and how they contribute to the perpetuation of social inequalities. With that in mind, it's time to delve deeper into the heart of Bourdieu's distinction. In the next segments we will break down the key elements of this concept, explore its implications, and discuss how it is applied in various social scenarios. So, stick around as we continue our journey into the intriguing world of Pierre Bourdieu's sociology. Now what exactly is distinction? It's more than just a term, it's a theory that examines social inequality. The heartbeat of Pierre Bourdieu's distinction lies in its three vital components, social class, cultural capital, and habitus. Let's unpack these, shall we? Firstly, social class. When we talk about social class, we're referring to the hierarchical divisions in society based on wealth, occupation, education, and other factors. Picture a high-rise building with the penthouse symbolizing the upper class, the middle floors representing the middle class, and the ground floor standing for the working class. This building is the society we live in, and the different floors are the social classes. Next, we delve into cultural capital. This concept is akin to currency, but instead of dollars and cents, we're dealing with knowledge, skills, education, the non-financial assets that promote social mobility. Imagine having a bookshelf filled with classics, knowing how to play the violin, or possessing a master's degree. These aren't just personal achievements. They're your cultural capital that helps you climb up the social ladder. Finally, habitus. Now this is a little tricky. Habitus is the deeply ingrained habits, skills, and dispositions that we develop over time due to our upbringing and experiences. It's like the lens through which we perceive and interact with the world. For instance, if you grew up in a family that values education, you're more likely to pursue higher studies. That's your habitus at work. So, when we talk about distinction, we're essentially discussing how these elements, social class, cultural capital, and habitus, interplay to shape our social identities and define our positions in society. It's about understanding how our taste in music, art, food, or even our educational choices aren't merely personal preferences, but deeply entwined with our social class and upbringing. Understanding these elements helps us grasp the intricate nature of distinction. So, we've outlined the key elements of distinction. Now, let's explore the implications of this theory. One of the most critical implications of Pierre Bourdieu's distinction is an enhanced understanding of social stratification. Bourdieu's theory suggests that our social classes are not merely a result of economic factors, but are also significantly influenced by cultural capital. This cultural capital includes knowledge, skills, education, and other cultural assets that a person possesses. So, the way we appreciate art, the music we listen to, the books we read, all these are not just personal preferences. They are a reflection of our social class, shaped by our cultural capital. By examining the concept of distinction, we can better understand the nuances of social stratification. It's not just about the haves and the have-nots in a financial sense, it's also about the cultural haves and have-nots. This understanding can help us navigate and interpret the complex social landscapes that surround us. 
Another implication of distinction lies in its impact on individuals' tastes and preferences. According to Bourdieu, our tastes are not developed in isolation. They are influenced by our upbringing, our education, and our social environment. For instance, a preference for classical music or fine wine is often associated with higher social classes. On the other hand, liking for pop music or fast food might be linked to lower social classes. These are not just stereotypes, they are manifestations of distinction, revealing how our social class influences our tastes. Moreover, distinction also highlights the role of social forces in shaping our identities. It suggests that our personal tastes and preferences, which we often regard as unique and individual, are in fact social constructs. They are products of our cultural upbringing and social conditioning, subtly molded by the invisible hand of social class. So, by understanding distinction, we can see that our social world is not as straightforward as it might seem. It's a complex tapestry where economic and cultural factors intertwine to shape our identities, tastes, and social standing. As we can see, distinction offers a unique lens to view and understand our society. It's time to look at how distinction applies in our everyday lives and society. Let's begin with education. Distinction is manifested in the ways we perceive and value different types of knowledge. For instance, the distinction between high culture and popular culture can be seen in the way we often value classical literature over comic books or classical music over pop music. This distinction is often reflected in our education systems, shaping our perception of what is valuable knowledge and what isn't. Now let's turn to the media. The concept of distinction can be used to understand the creation and consumption of different types of media. Media, like literature, music, and film, often reflect the tastes and preferences of different social groups. These tastes are not merely individual choices but are shaped by our social positions. For example, the distinction between high-end and low-end media, or between mainstream and alternative media, mirrors social hierarchies and reflects societal power dynamics. Culture is another area where distinction plays a key role. The tastes and preferences we develop, the clothes we wear, the food we eat, the music we listen to, the art we appreciate, all these cultural practices are influenced by distinction. They signal our social position and identity to others, and they also shape our understanding of ourselves and our place in the world. But the concept of distinction is not just about analyzing cultural practices or media consumption, it's a tool that can help us comprehend societal structures and disparities. It can shed light on how social hierarchies are maintained and reproduced, how power operates, and how privilege and disadvantage are distributed. It can make us aware of the often invisible boundaries that divide us, and the subtle ways in which these boundaries are drawn and maintained. Indeed, distinction is a powerful tool that can shed light on the complexities of our social world. We've traversed the intriguing landscape of Bourdieu's distinction, understanding its elements, implications, and applications. In our journey, we've dissected the core tenets of Bourdieu's groundbreaking theory, shedding light on the nuanced interplay between taste, cultural capital, and social class that underpin our societal structures. We've delved into the intricacies of distinction, teasing apart the complex, multifaceted layers of cultural consumption and the ways they contribute to social stratification. The implications of distinction are profound, shaping our understanding of societal dynamics and the influence of cultural capital. As we've discussed, Bourdieu's concept doesn't merely describe a phenomenon, it provides a critical lens through which we can examine and interpret the world around us. We've also explored the practical applications of distinction. From the realm of academia to the corridors of power, the influence of Bourdieu's theory is far-reaching. It's a tool that helps us decode the complexities of social hierarchies and power relations, and it's a perspective that offers valuable insights into the ways in which cultural capital shapes and is shaped by our interactions with the world. But the journey doesn't end here. The beauty of Bourdieu's distinction lies in its enduring relevance. It continues to resonate in today's society, shedding light on the ongoing dance of power, taste, and class in our ever-evolving cultural landscape. It's a testament to Bourdieu's astute observations and his deep understanding of the human condition. So, what's next? The exploration of distinction is an ongoing process, a constant dialogue between theory and practice, between understanding and application. We invite you to join this conversation to engage with these ideas and to deepen your understanding of the world we inhabit. Thank you for watching. 
Please like and share our video, subscribe to our YouTube channel, and don't forget to let us know your thoughts and suggestions in the comments down below.